Hey all you Mavic Pro and Spark fans, today is a good day for you. Today DJI released a new version of the DJI GO 4 software, it's version 4.1.18 and it has a few updates for both the Mavic and Spark fans and there's some general updates to just the uh, editing software as well. So the first one we're going to dive into is the Mavic Pro. So they updated uh, to include some additional panorama shooting modes. Now they say this is only specific to uh, if you have firmware version 1.4.1.0 or higher. The current version of firmware is version 1.4.0 so that version is not available that will release the new panorama feature. So look for that in a future firmware update. So for now, you will not be able to access those new panorama modes until they release that firmware update. Now they don't specify what additional ones they have added. My guess is that they are making that probably roughly equivalent to what is available for the DJI Spark. Now that is the only update that they have listed specific for the uh, Mavic Pro. For the Spark, they have two items in their release notes. The first one is that they say they've improved panorama shooting and they've solved an issue that was causing the app crash to crash during panorama stitching. And I'd seen some updates out there from people uh, in uh, comments as well as forums that it indicated, especially on older uh, iPhones and older devices uh, like uh, si uh, iPhone 6 and maybe older, uh, that it was crashing. Uh, and not as much on the newer versions, but more so on the older versions. So it sounds like they've probably uh, fix that. So that is good. I think a lot of you guys will be uh, excited about that. Now they've also added support for third-party MFI game pads. So MFI is Apple's uh, certification. MFI stands for made for iPhone or iPad or uh, iPod or iOS, whatever you want to say, but it's made for iDevices, Apple's iDevices. And that is the certification process that hardware makers have to go through with Apple. I think it costs money, there's licensing, there's a, a whole process involved with it uh, that you have to go through in order to get a piece of hardware that wants to connect to one of the iDevices, one of Apple's iDevices. Uh, there's a process you have to go through to get it certified. So DJI is saying that they've added support for MFI gamepads. So what are gamepads? So gamepads are basically a way of being able to add, turn your, or your iPhone or your iPad into kind of a more traditional gaming device. So rather than using the virtual sticks on here to uh, play a racing game, you know, touching the screen or to fly your drone, right? Your DJI Spark using virtual joysticks to be able to control it. There's these game pads that they have that, uh, that add physical sticks to the sides and it plugs into the lightning device or some of them uh, connect via Bluetooth. Uh, and basically what it'll allow you to do is be able to control your Spark with physical sticks rather than using the virtual sticks on the screen. So I think it'll give you better control over your device. Now, what it's not going to do is it's not going to give you better connection between your phone and your Spark aircraft. So this is not necessarily for those of you that are using remote controls to fly your Spark. I've got a remote control uh, to fly my Spark, so this really isn't something that's going to really help me out. Uh, but for those of you who don't want to spend the $150 to, to buy a remote control, you can spend money on a gamepad. I'm not sure how they are. Uh, maybe I'll try and link to one in the uh, uh, notes below. So for look, look for that, I will uh, uh, provide a link to one. But it's a way to be able to, to, to have finer control over your, your Spark. So I think this will be uh, pretty cool. I think I've, uh, it's something that I've heard people requesting before. So uh, glad that DJI is listening for that. So they've also added some items to the editor within uh, DJI Go 4. Uh, so they say they've added auto pinpoint mode, which recognizes the best parts of shots you select and puts them into an editing project. Now, I don't necessarily use the editing tools very often that are part of DJI Go 4. Uh, so for those, those of you guys who have used this uh, and uh, have tried this out, I'm interested to hear uh, your comments down below. Is, is that working for you? Is that not working for you? Um, 
And then uh, they also say that they've updated the filter music and opening title library. So again, they're just adding more, more capabilities to that uh, editing tools within DJI Go. And then they say they've added a general item, which has added the knowledge quiz for users in the US. And this is one that I think is maybe going to be a little bit on the controversial side. So DJI, uh, a few weeks ago, I think it was around October 25th, they uh, announced a couple of things uh, uh, in some uh, press releases and so on they announced during this was this idea of a knowledge quiz. So this is what they say. They say the new DJI knowledge quiz will require drone pilots to correctly answer a series of basic questions about safe drone use before their first flights. The questions will appear in DJI Go 4, DJI's main flight app, which runs on smartphones and tablets connected to the drone uh, remote controllers. So it's going to ask a series of questions, and this says, in the US, the implementation, all DJI pilots will be presented with a list of nine questions and must correctly answer all of them in order to be able to fly. Pilots can continue answering new questions until they successfully pass the knowledge quiz. The knowledge quiz will initially be available in the US in an update to the DJI Go 4 app at the end of October, which is actually now turning into the middle of November. Uh, that's just released with 4.1.18, and it'll be expanded to other countries in the future uh, using questions customized for each country's rules and guidelines. So I'm curious to hear, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Leave us some, some questions below. This is the question of the day. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think this is a good thing? I'm a little bit torn on it, right? So I'm a big advocate for wanting users and pilots of drones to be following the laws and being safe, okay? And doing it in a way that they're not gonna lose their device. I see a lot of times in the forums and comments, people are losing their drones and, uh, and so on. And some of it is, is uh, DJI's fault and some of it is from inexperience and not really understanding how the technology works. And so uh, I would like to see more informed and knowledgeable and safe uh, pilots flying their drones early on. So in that way, I like the, the idea. Little concerned about, you know, well, you can't use your drone unless you pass this quiz. So uh, I imagine it's not that difficult, but not having seen it, it's hard to say. Uh, I tried to fly my drone today and I was able to fly it fine, but that's because probably I have already flown uh, before, so I didn't get asked that. So uh, I'm curious to see for you guys out there, uh, what's it look like? What do you think? What are your thoughts? Uh, should they really be doing this? Should they not be doing this? Bad idea? Good idea? Uh, I'm, I'm really curious to hear what you guys have to say. So, all right. Uh, we'll uh, put in the description below the full release notes of the, uh, of the update uh, so you guys can check them out. Again, for the Mavic, they added some panorama modes. For the DJI Spark, they uh, uh, improved how the panoramas are taken and they fixed a bug for stitching those together. Uh, and then one of the big, the controversial items really is the knowledge quiz for the U.S. user. So uh, I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say on that. Anyways, uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, if you do enjoy and you get use uh, and, and knowledge out of this, uh, you can support us uh, down below. Uh, we've got affiliate links to be able to, to uh, if you're buying any DJI gear, love for you to use the uh, DJI affiliate links below or you're buying anything from Amazon, I'd love for you to buy uh, uh, from there uh, doesn't cost you anything extra. Gets a, uh, we get a little, uh, uh, a few cents on whatever you you purchase, and it helps us to be able to buy better camera gear, other items to be able to uh, review and pass along the knowledge for you guys. So uh, love to to, to uh, have you guys uh, with us. Thanks for watching. We got lots of other videos in our library out there. Go check them out, and we got a lot more planned for you uh, here to come. So we will uh, catch you on the next one. Thanks for joining us. Bye bye. Oh, and one other item for you guys on Android. I saw some reports on uh, the DJI forum that Android users that upgraded to this new version and were trying to use the OTG cable were getting some interesting results. So they were not seeing the number of uh, uh, satellites appropriately. They were grayed out up here in the top of the DJI Go screen. And then the uh, on the bottom, the speed and elevation, that stuff was showing as NA. So if you're trying to use an OTG cable, 
watch out uh, if you're on the Android platform. It may not work exactly like you're hoping, so uh, watch out for that. And again, if you see that, I'd love to hear it down below as well. So, all right, thanks, and we'll catch you later.